Hi, I am Ufuma Ogaga from Goshen Bookkeeping and Consulting. In this video, I am going to answer a question I received from a subscriber demonstrating how to convert an estimate to progress invoicing using the percentage method. I am also going to clarify some of the QuickBooks Online labels that you are seeing in your file whenever you set it up, such as the pledges versus the invoices, and also answer that question as to does that label really matter um, and how does it impact your invoices that you send out to your customers. So here's a question that I received from John. John is actually a treasurer for a nonprofit organization that is currently using QuickBooks Online. His first question is, he's already set up the file and based on how he set up the file, his invoice buttons are showing as pledge. And he wants to know, does this really matter? Now I will say yes and no. If you are a nonprofit organization that deals with different types of customers, so let's say you have donors, you have retail customers, you didn't uh, you say as people renting at your facilities, or if you have like students where you're collecting tuition, or if you have like educators where you're charging fees, etc., etc., you want to make sure you choose the generic customer label when you're setting up your QuickBooks online file. If you don't choose that and you choose the donors label, you're going to end up with the word pledge for invoices when you are not necessarily sending out a pledge or doing pledges for all of your customer base. And those are the areas that the word the labels in QuickBooks Online matters. It matters with your sales form, the sales forms that are going out of the system to your different stakeholders. Now, in terms of the function, the function behind the label is still the same. So regardless of whether it's called a pledge or whether it's called an invoice, the function is still the same. So let's jump right into QuickBooks Online and I'll show you how to change your labels. If you change your label and the system does not take those changes, I will show you a quick workaround that I tend to do in some of my clients file. So this is my QuickBooks Online sample company file. I am actually using the QuickBooks Online advanced version, which is very similar to the plus version for nonprofit organization. This is the highest level of version. So my interface might look a little bit different from what you are seeing on your end but the function behind the stuff that I'm about to show you are still the same. Now, I want to pause here and say, if you have not watched my estimates video or my progress invoicing video, click the link in the description field. Go watch those videos and also check out my blog to follow the transcript that goes, that accompanies those different videos. So in QuickBooks Online, if you come in here and you're looking, you click the quick create button, you see pledges is listed on the customer. Now this also means invoices. So if you're seeing this as pledges in your own QuickBooks online file, what you can do is come in, click on the gear icon here, go to accounts and settings. And in here, there are a couple of things that you want to do. First, you want to make sure that you have selected the correct tax form for your nonprofit entity. You want to make sure that the tax form that is displayed here actually says the Form 990, regardless of whether you're filing a return or not. So you want to make sure if you're a church, you still want to make sure you pick this Form 990 so that the system gives you the correct labels and it gives you the correct, the, the correct names for your financial reports. So you want to make sure your tax form is selected and industry type, depending on how you purchase your QuickBooks online file. So if you purchase it through TechSoup, you can always change the industry type to whatever makes sense for your type of entity. 
but make sure the the driving force is always the nonprofit organization part that I tell my clients to always have as a default. So once you've selected the right company type and company tax form, the next place that you need to go to is the advanced tab. So under the advanced tab, your company tax form that you chose in the company tab will show up here. Then when you scroll all the way down, you're going to see this other preferences section here and you will see the stuff that says customer label. Now most people, and most nonprofit organizations, when they set up their QuickBooks file, tend to go happy clicking um, and usually just come in here and select the donors. If you have different customer types where your stakeholders are not just donors, maybe you have grantors, maybe you have um, students that you're collecting tuition fees from, or maybe you have building tenants that you're renting at your facility. You don't want to choose any of these other labels. You need to keep the label at the customer level. Keep it as generic as possible. You need to choose the customer version. Now, if you have chosen the donor version the first time, you can come in here and I'm going to repeat what I just did. So you can, under other preferences, you can come in here, click the customer label and change it to say customers. You also want to make sure you have all these three bucks checked. You want to get some warning for check number, bill number, and journal entry number. And you can always extend the timeline of how QuickBooks should keep you logged in. So once you've changed that label, QuickBooks will automatically refresh itself and bring you back into the screen. Now, here is a lovely caveat to all of this. So let's say when you first initially set up your QuickBooks file, you chose donors here and all of your reports, everything is showing pledge, everything is showing all custom nonprofit terminology. That is fine. Sometimes QuickBooks will refuse to change that regardless of what you do here. And I have a quick walk around tip to help fix that issue. So once you have made this change back to customers, you need to log out of QuickBooks, clear your browser, cash and cookies, so you can just click on your browser little icon. I am using Chrome browser, so you can click on your inside of your Chrome browser, go to more tools, and then clear your browser data, clear the cache and cookies in your browser. And then once you've done that, close out Chrome, log back into Chrome, and then log back into QuickBooks Online and see if the system accepts the changes that you have made. Sometimes that works. Sometimes it doesn't work. Now, if you've gone through that process and you're like, Ufuma, it still did not take any of my changes that I made. I am still seeing pledges in my uh, customer and sales center. What you can do, this is also another workaround because again, as I mentioned before, the function behind the label is still the same regardless of what the label is called. However, what your end users, your stakeholders, your customers, what they see is where that label of pledge really matters. So what I mean by that is when you go to the sales tab, when you come into the sales tab and you go to the section that says messages, this is where all of your sales forms will show up where you can type out the message that your sales form should have. As you can see here, you will see that there are some instances where the system is actually doing the conversion to tell to change the labels of invoices but then you look at an instance at the top here you will see that hey it's still calling it pledge even though i've already made the change to customers it's still showing my sales form as a pledge my quick tip walk around is change this label here so let's say this was um i, I changed this earlier so let's say this was pledge you want to change this to actually say invoice so you want to change it to say invoice. Do not change this pledge number box. Because if you try to change it and change the word pledge there to say invoice, the system will not recognize your numbering sequence, your sales form numbers. It will never recognize it. And you're going to have multiple errors. So what I recommend is the only thing you have to change in the subject line Ignore all of the labels. If your system is still saying pledge, 
after you've changed the customer label to say customers, all you have to do is come in here and delete the word in the um, subject line, change it to say invoice, update your message at the bottom here to say invoice, and you know, add all your lovely marketing, branding message that you, you should have and you should add um, as I tend to recommend for my clients, you know, customize that to what you want your stakeholders to receive when they get an invoice from you. Customize that. You can repeat the same process, go through all of the sales form, make sure the correct names are listed. Statements. So you go through all of that, make sure that, you know, all of your labels are saying the correct language that you want it to say. Don't forget to email yourself a copy of any invoice and any sales form you are sending out of the system. I highly recommend checking that box to say email me a copy or you can always add a copy of maybe a generic email address that you tend to use for your nonprofit in the copy um, box or in the blind um, BCC blind copy box. So once you've made those changes and again you see how you know the system is still showing pledges in some areas and it's showing invoices in other areas. That's fine. So once you've made all those changes and you can always read about the different messages that, you know, goes along with all of the stuff. So you can make changes to everything that you need um, at the top and at the bottom and then just click save. Coming here for reminders, you want to do the same thing again. When I clicked on reminders, you will see that it's showing the word pledge, despite the fact that I did change my customer label to customers. So here I'm going to manually change this to say invoice. And you will see my language says invoice here, but it was showing pledges um, there before. So you have to do this for all of the messages that you're customizing. Um, in this particular field in your QuickBooks file if the system did not accept your changes that you made previously. So you just click save and I'm just going to verify that everything else again is still showing online pledge. Now with this particular version the system might still show the word pledge on there but again you have to clear your cash and cookies and try to make sure do that first step that I mentioned earlier. If it's still showing pledge don't worry about it. Don't stress about it. It's just a cosmetic naming that QuickBooks tends to, tends to do. And I would encourage you to submit feedback to them. But just, just be mindful of that. You, the key thing is to make sure that you've changed the messages to say what you wanted to say for your nonprofit. You've made all of those changes. Just click done so that the, the system can accept your changes. And I like to usually refresh. I am not going to log out in this system. So I've already done all the refreshing that I need. And yes, my stuff is still showing me as pledges, but that's, as I already stated, this is fine. It can still show pledge because I know pledge means invoices. The function is still the same behind the scenes. Okay, so that's the answer to your question number one. The other question that you had um, in number two was, how do you create an estimate and convert that estimate or build portions of those estimates to a customer using the progress invoice in future and you want to build it using each line item that you have created in the estimate. And I highly recommend watch my estimates video. I'll link, link the video down in the description field or you can click the eye icon. You want to create an estimate first. In order to do partial billing and do progress billing in QuickBooks Online, you need to be you need to create an estimate first. So when you create an estimate, your key question is you've created the estimate, it's time for you to invoice the customer. You want to know how the percentage of each line works, how that looks like, and I'm going to show you that in a minute. So in terms of your other videos on estimates and invoicing, feel free to check the rest of my channel. There's a playlist of QuickBooks Online for nonprofits, so you can check that. You can also visit my blog and check out some of those resources to answer some of your questions about invoicing and doing estimates in QuickBooks Online. So to answer your question, 
here I'm going to go into my cell center. Now, I already created all my test cu um, customers and everything. There are a couple of ways that you can create estimates in the system. So if you go under this All Cells tab, if you go under the All Cells tab, you can click on New Transaction and then do Estimate there. Or you can click on the plus new icon and go to Estimate here. So you have two different ways to create estimates in the system. So here I'm going to create an estimate. And when I create the estimate, I want to make sure that this is the status is either showing as pending and send it to the customer to accept it. Once the customer accepts it, it will switch to accepted. So I'm going to create the estimate. I've already created an estimate before in the system. So let's say we are doing construction work. And I'm just using this as an example. So you can see what's happening. When you're creating the estimate, you go to the process of adding your products and services, give a description, new property, work, add your quantity, add your rates, add your amount, pick a class, make sure that you, you've picked your location tracking, which is also known as division, also known as departments in QuickBooks Online. If this is not a donation that is restricted, you always use the without donor restriction location option so let's say we want to add more line items so let's we're doing beauty materials here and and i'm just coming up with random numbers to show you an example of how this looks like we're doing construction work we're buying materials and we are also probably going to rent out some part of the facility, enter income, at some time in the future. The whole purpose of using estimates is, is for you to be able to build your customer in different installment plans. So if you have a customer that you're working with, whether it's a government entity, a grantor, a funder, or whatever, you want to build them in increments of, you know, 50% down, 20%, you know, after the fact, you want to build them in, in increments. That is the whole purpose of using an estimate in QuickBooks Online. So now that I've created all of my estimate, there's my total amount. You can also add any attachment like contracts or anything else that you want to add there. Normally, you would have an email address here that you can send this estimate to the customer to accept the estimate you have an email address there that you can do that i'm going to save this estimate so i can show you how it looks like so this is how the estimate looks like and you can customize this whole entire form watch my custom sales uh, form video to understand how to customize this form so this is how our estimate looks like when the customer accepts the estimate their name will be shown here and the date will be shown there. So I'm going to pretend that, hey, this customer has accepted this estimate. I am going to change the status from pending to accepted. In order for you to be able to send out an invoice with this estimate, you need to change the status from pending to accepted. I'm just going to say customer accepted the invoice perfect as soon as I change that to accepted the create a pledge or create an invoice button will automatically show up for me so again I'm going to click save on this and I'm going to give you a quick preview of how the estimate looks like now that we've accepted it so once the estimate is accepted you will see accepted by the name of the person and then the date that the person accepted the estimate so that's how that looks like so I'm done creating all of my estimates I and mean, I already click save. I'm going to click save and close so you see where that estimate is showing. So my estimate tab here under this, this is known as a money bar. My estimates tab here is now showing that I have $12,000 under John Doe, which is what we created. This is the one that I created before. So I'm going to open that up again. Now, to create an invoice from this particular estimate, you can click on this button to do it here, or you can click on new transaction here and then do pledge. 
If the system has accepted your changes, you will see that as invoice. So you have two different options of creating an invoice from that particular estimate. And when you want to create an invoice from that estimate, if you did this second option, you can type the customer name. As soon as you type the customer name, the system is going to give you the estimate at the side here and ask you, do you want to add the estimate into this particular invoice to send to the customer? I am going to click the option that says add. Now, when I click that option that says add, the system is going to ask me, how much of this invoice do you want to bill out to this customer now? You can do total of all of the estimate lines, which is the entire 12,000. You can do a percentage of each line. So you can set the system, hey, I want to do 50%. I want to do 20%, 30%. You can do that option and the system will automatically do the calculation of the total amount for you. Or you can do the custom amount for each line. So whatever option you choose here, if you choose the second option, the system will take the percentage of the total amount for you, or you can do it manually yourself by using the custom amount for each line. And I will show you how both of them work in two different invoices. So we're going to do the second option. Instead of 50%, I want to do 30% of the invoice. So when I enter the percentage here, the system automatically takes 30% of the 12,000 is this total amount. So now I'm going to click copy to invoice. As soon as I click copy to invoice, the system is going to automatically calculate 30% of each line amount for me and put it in the system here to send out to the customer. So this is an invoice. And again, you can always send an email email this out to the customer. I'm not going to do that because again, I'm just doing the test file of this. So there's the invoice. So I'm going to click save and close. That is how you create an invoice using that second method percentage from an estimate to an invoice uh, part. Okay. Let's say you want to choose the third option. So if you wanted to do the third option, we're going to repeat what we just stated again. I'm going to click on the third option. I'm going to click on pledge again, which is also invoice. And I'm going to do John Doe. And again, the system will bring back that estimate. It's always going to give you the full estimate amount. And then you do the calculations yourself or allow the system to do it for you. So if I click add again, it's showing me the remaining total of my estimate is only 8,400 out of that 12,000 that I built before. Instead of doing the second method, I want to do the third method. I want to do the third option and show you how you can still achieve the percentage stuff. Let's say you want some of the lines to be built 50% and other lines to be built 20%. You can use the third option to do that. So I'm going to do the third option. And here in the third option is showing me all the full amounts that I previously had. What I'm going to do here is click on, again, I clicked on the line under the do, click on the line, showing it as an amount. So I'm going to change this to say percentage and tell the system, I want you to actually do 50% of that line amount. Again, I'm going to tell the system, that I wanted to do for that first line. And then the second line, I want the system to do 20% of that amount. And then the third line, I want the system to do 80. Yep, let's do 15% of that line. So as you type your percentage there, the system automatically calculates the amount from the major total amounts for each line. So you've done the estimate. And let's give this a different date to keep it different from the other one. You've done all the estimates. Everything checks out. You have your class tracking. You have your location tracking. Now tags is a brand new feature that is still somewhat in beta mode. Um, so I won't really focus or stress about that. And you can always at the top here under the customer name, you will always see this stuff that says is linked. It you always link it back to the estimate so that you can always go back to the estimate to figure out how much was built 
and how much is still left over. So here I've done all my estimates. So I'm just going to click save and close. Now, the system is still showing the full estimate. That tab will always show the full estimate amount. A perfect way to find that and see what else is left over to build out for a particular stakeholder or customer is to go into the report center. And in the search bar here, you want to type estimates. And when you type estimates, it will bring up the estimates and progress invoicing summary by customer. Now, you can also find that report if you scroll all the way down to the sales and customer section. The report is here. If you tend to do a lot of progress invoicing, I will recommend, you know, starting this so that this shows up under your favorites and it's more easier and quicker for you to get it access to that report but I usually tend to just do search for the report in my search bar and the system will come up with the report so here is this estimate report so this estimate report shows me this is the amount of the estimate this is the amount that I've invoiced out this is the percentage total that I've invoiced out and here is my balance that is left over from that estimate so this is pretty much in a nutshell, the quick, easy way to use estimates and progress invoicing in QuickBooks Online. Feel free to leave a comment below and letting me know if you have further questions about this or if you want to see me do other types of videos, clarifying some things in QuickBooks Online, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also hit the notification bell icon that way you get an update of when I tend to post different content, technology tips and tricks and finance tips and tricks to help you manage your nonprofit organization and actually build sustainable profits.